All right, so we're taking up numerical calculations related to uh, chloride ion um, calculations. So we're taking up numerical questions based on the chloride ion titrations we talked about last day. So if you grab your head and book, look on page 101, and we're going to start with number 70. Number 17, uh, and we're on page 101. Uh, All right, here we go. 25 milliliters of a sodium chloride solution having an unknown concentration is titrated against 0.1 molars of uh, uh, 0.1 molar uh, silver nitrate using a chromate ion as an indicator. Okay. Now, we have to ask ourselves, what do you think the function of the chromate ion indicator is? And remember, what it is it that we look for when we do these titration reactions? Yes. We're looking for a precipitate. And chromate in particular is useful because chromates often have very bright colors, like uh, yellows and oranges. So we see a chromate in there, um, often you have a very bright colored precipitate. All right, so 36.8 milliliters of the silver nitrate solution are required to reach the equivalence point. What is the concentration of chloride? All righty. And the mole ratio we want here is three moles of carbon dioxide. So we've got 25.0 milliliters of sodium chloride. First thing I do when I see that and I'm doing a titration question is I recognize that we're dealing with a, uh, a spectator ion in this course. Sodium is generally a spectator ion in this course. So we're really, we're after the chloride. So the concentration of chloride is unknown. And we have 0.0. .0 250 liters. So this is the information so I gathered from that. We have 25 mils of and it's sodium chloride, and we don't know its concentration. And now it says it's and so that's the information. I don't know the concentration of chloride. I'm suspecting sodium is just a spectator. It's not going to form a precipitate, because in this course we can consider sodium salts to be uh, just spectator ions. And it's unknown, so that means it's a concentration of chloride that's unknown. Sodium's unknown too, it's not going to matter, and that's what I'm after. Next thing, we know that we have to titrate this with uh, 0.1 molar, so 0 0.100 molar is silver nitrate. And it also tells us that 36.8 milliliters of this solution is used. Well, once again, because I'm in a Chem 12 course and I looked at my solubility charts, I know that nitrate is the soluble ion, so really I am after the silver. And we know lots about the silver. We know the volume, so we have 0 0.0368 liters of, and we know the concentration of silver. I just looked at the formula of the silver nitrate, and I saw that there was only one silver in every formula unit of silver nitrate. Since there's only one silver, I know right away the concentration of silver is 0.1 molar. So liters of carbon dioxide is going to be 45 liters of Okay. So I know a little bit more about this. I know that the concentration of silver is 0.1 molar, and I know I have the liters of it. What can I calculate from those two bits of information? I can calculate the number of moles of silver. Okay. Now, because it's a ch uh, calculation, um, what else do I know? What if we have a mass volume problem? Uh, what else do I know about this? Well, I know that silver uh, and chloride produce a precipitate, right? So we know that silver chloride produces a precipitate. If we are adding silver chloride, or sorry, adding sorry chloride, or sorry, adding silver into a chloride solution, we're going to get a precipitate, precipitate, precipitate. If we read carefully, we saw that our silver chloride precipitate is probably colorless. At some point, we will add some extra silver, 
and it won't precipitate with the chloride. Yeah, it'll precipitate with the chromate. So we're doing a little bit of a different kind of reaction here. Rather than looking for the first appearance of a precipitate, we're going to be adding lots of silver in and precipitating out the chloride. Precipitating, precipitating, till there's no chloride left. Right? And when there's no chloride left, the extra silver we add will form a precipitate with the chromate we were told that was present. So we have to read this question and think about it a bit to get it right. We have to understand that if the chromate's present, it's the thing that's colorful, and it's the thing that's going to make the precipitate that we're looking for. So we could do a titration like we did last day, when we just have the silver chloride. For some reason, we're looking just for the silver chloride precipitate. Now, because we're told chromate is present in that question, we're looking, oh, we're using up all the chloride. And when all the chloride is used up, that little extra silver is going to form precipitate with the chromate, and it'll be a nice bright color. And that'll tell us that we have reached our Endpoint. Endpoint. End point. Well done there in the back. End point. Okay. So now we've got everything we need. How many moles of silver are present? Do the calculation. Now. Do the calculation on your own and then check off with me what I've done on the board. of silver to precipitate chloride, I'm going to make an equation between the two and see if it's one to one. So I'm assuming my precipitate is silver chloride. There it is. Silver chloride precipitates one to one with free silver and free chloride. So if this is my number of moles of silver, what do I also know now? It's also the moles of chloride. Right? It's a little different from yesterday's question, right? When we were looking for the first precipitate. Now we used up all the chloride, so we know the number of moles of silver, well, the number of moles of chloride. So I'm just going to say, actually, not, I don't know the concentration of chloride. I know the number of moles of chloride, number of moles of chloride, and that's going to be the same as the number of moles of silver. Because we precipitated them one to one, we kept adding silver to use up all the chloride. If that's the case now, can we figure out the number of moles of chloride in the original sample? Yes, we can. We just precipitated all of them. Can we figure out the concentration of the original sample? Yes, we do. We have a number of moles over volume. So go ahead and do that calculation now. Oh, for goodness sakes. Yes, thank you. Because what you get is a 1 and a 2.8. Thank you. I was looking at carbon dioxide. Yes, okay, that's a good thing. We didn't fix that. That's a 1 here, not a 3. So that's the difference between the next one. Yes. Anything else wrong? So, what we've done is we've cited that the concentration of chloride is number of moles per volume. So I put the number of moles of chloride over the volume of the sample. Why didn't I use the total volume in this case? Yes. Concentration. That's right. We're only looking for the concentration of chloride in the original sample based on the number of moles were in the original sample. So the new concentration, when we've added a little, that doesn't mean anything to us in this case. It's the number of moles we're adding. And that's true for these titrations. We usually take the titration and we're interested in number of moles present in the final mixture and we put that number of moles into whatever the original volume was. We're not really interested in the concentration in that mixture. Sometimes we calculate it on the way to getting number of moles. All right, so that's that question done. All right, so I guess you're primed and ready to go for question number 71. So do number 71 now, and then we will take it up in an instant.